obsession, but it's also one of those things that's like, it, you can't quite put your finger on it. Yeah. It's really kind of like a psychedelic trip in its own ways. You can't quite put your finger on like why it speaks to you, but it does. And it's like an unspoken thing. It's hard to really just put into words or put your finger on, but it's like, I know you know. And they're like, I know you know. It's like, high five. It's truly a, a connection I can't describe when you're at a King Gizzard concert. I am a big Pearl Jam fan, and they have a big community. I'm a big Pink Floyd fan, Grateful Dead fan. There's always a big feeling of, I'm the better fan. I know this band better. And we're in a place, and I hope King Gizzard is always in this place, where every time I bring up King Gizzard with somebody who has a passion for them, I like feel them just want to gush with love about this band. Every person I've ever met and talked to about King Gizzard, they just are on another level in the way that uh, they connect and bring people together. I just feel like I was like meant to follow this band. I was always so like envious of people that got to follow around like Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin back in the day, but like I feel like I'm living my truth now, you know, it's like I'm obsessed. <laughs> Yeah, for, for me, uh, King Gizzard, like, they, they kind of unlocked a, a... Oh, he got jealous. He's not in the documentary. It's okay, Bryce. You couldn't be in. No, I don't think he knows what's going oh, on. Okay. It's a documentary. We're being interviewed for a documentary. Uh, I got into King Gizzard back in the 2017 album run. We got into King Gizzard probably 2017, 2018. King Gizzard fan since 2016. For like, since 2019. Uh, around 2018 is when I started like really kind of listening to them. Oh dang, well I mean I've been King and Gizzard fan since like maybe like 2016. I started listening to King Giz in 2016. Like I have, because I saw him back in 2014 yeah. the first time. and. So Man, I bought these tickets back in November of 2019, and the original show was supposed to be at uh, uh, March of 2020. We got the tickets in 2019, and then, you know, got rescheduled once, and then again. It was a roller coaster of a ride for sure. After sitting on these tickets for close to three years, it's finally fucking happening, baby! That's, That's a lot of days. Lot of I had no idea that it's been that long. Oh my god. What the fuck just happened to them between when they bought this ticket? and when they're showing up. Oh my God, all the heartbreaks that like led up to this was insane. But yeah, I literally posted on my Instagram today, real war veterans have had these tickets in their, in their AXS account for three years now. <laughs> I'm here to see them in Red Rocks, all the way from England. The Red Rock gigs feel very important for like their, their status and, their, and their, like, their popularity. I mean, I've never been to Red Rocks before. It's always been a dream, and like, I wanted to find the right band to come to. So, this two night stand at King Gears is perfect. Like, no repeats. That's definitely the most ex exciting thing. I personally am pumped to see how pumped they are about this show. They are fucking amped. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's gonna be a fucking trip. I can't wait. Uh, I'm also really excited for, for all the new music that they're gonna be play, exactly. playing. Yeah. Like if you think about it, if it would have happened back in 2020, we probably wouldn't be getting interest for it at Red Rocks. Yeah. Oh. You know? Red Rocks is like the mecca yeah. of like music venues. What I'm looking forward to, is, and I know this will happen, is, is sitting there in the middle of the show and just looking around and looking up at the crowd and down at the band and just saying like, holy shit, it's finally fucking happened. It is, it is Magenta Mountain come to life, you know? It's like the dream finally realized. I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's crazy how many thoughts I've had in the past few years that you are like just wording, like Magenta Mountain being Red Rocks, you know? It's the purple mountain that we're up and it's our magical land. You understand it. You're beautiful. We're on the, we're on the same yeah. wave, yeah. wavelength, man. I love King Gizzard! Hang out. Fuck off! <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> After all these transformations and uh, journeys that we've been on, why do you still love this band? Why do you hold on to the ticket? What is it that brings you here? I mean, I, I feel like literally everybody on the planet went through their own personal hell. 
over the pandemic in 2020 and then 2021 on top of that, all of those like personal touch things that, that change in your life um, in that time. But, um, but having King Gizzard as, as part of the soundtrack for all of that has been a pretty constant thing, I have to say. <laughs> It's insane how much has happened to everybody here. Even if somebody just sat in their room, they still just lived through like a pandemic, you know? There's, we met some guy who had a kid during this thing. Well, and like people are different people now. They are fundamentally changed, but they're still a constant. They are here with this ticket with a love for King Gizzard. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they've de definitely been a big factor in my life uh, changing for the better, so. So, um... I started hiking the Continental Divide Trail. I hiked 1,500 miles, basically Steamboat Springs, and then got a ride to Denver from there. I didn't think I was going to make it to the Red Rock shows. I didn't have a ticket for either day, but the hiker community, people are very encouraging about anything. And so as soon as I started telling people like, oh, like, yeah, I'm probably gonna miss the Red Rock show because of this hike, they're like, no way. No, you gotta make it to that show. You gotta make that, that's gonna be huge. I hate you guys for making this documentary. Um, I love this environment, I love everybody, but I've never seen this many Giz fans. I'm like overwhelmed, it's crazy. I mean, they're just the most welcoming of them. I normally wouldn't really think to uh, come out for a meetup, but it's the most funniest, smartest, like, welcoming crowd, and so um, they're just the best fans, and I think they're the most open. I'm here with my friend Julia. She makes yeah. all this, like, she makes all these painted jackets for Gizzard. Hell yeah. She's from Montreal. I'm from, you know, Cincinnati, so being able to come down here together with that is like, yeah, meeting your friends, meeting Jack. Yeah. There's right. like, you know, all these different people that, not just here, like, you, you know, you get to meet them throughout all the different shows, yeah. and now this is, like, the ultimate, this is, like, the peak. <laughs> now it's, like, at a point where it's, like, whoa, cool, I can just go to an event and say all the, like, annoying shit that I've been saying to my family and friends for years, but they'll, like, get it and, like, want to talk to me about it. So, yeah, it's kind of, like, the only thing that's been consistent in my life for six years is, like, raving to my friends and family about King Gizzard. And now there's finally like a community who gets it and I can talk to her about it. Nobody in my friend group is very passionate about Gizzard at all. I sound like a fucking weirdo when I uh, ramble about them. So it's cool to be able to ramble amongst friends that appreciate it, it's, it's cool. I mean like, it's crazy how many people showed up. I did not expect this many people at all. Um, and I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, man. Like I'm, I'm the one music nut in my friend group and I'm obsessed with the with the weird lizard band uh, <laughs> and it's really awesome to just come and like hang out with everyone that's like just as obsessed I mean you know I met all you guys just now like less than an hour ago and like you guys are awesome man <laughs>
this is something that you can only weird out about with certain people. So it's like, yeah. I love that we, we all find each other. But I have a really hard time getting my friends into King Gizzard. Like, it's too weird. It's like, you just got to break this wall. Like, once you break the wall, you get it. But if you're not breaking that wall, it kind of, you're just kind of on the outside. So I think that's why people are really obsessed with it. Yo, like, everyone's got to check this out. King Gizzard's so sick. And like, no one would, no one would like it or comment. And I was like, what the fuck, why aren't my friends like, telling me how sick King Gizzard is. And I'd like rave to people, and at the time, people are always like, what's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? And it's like, okay, first, they got two drummers. Second, three guitarists. And it's just like, I had this like list of things that I'd tell, I was just like, so stoked about it. And if I'm trying to get somebody that I know to enjoy, like I'm putting on an album for them or something like that, or putting on a song, like I want them to understand the context of this band. Like I want you to know, like, yeah, they're from Australia, and yeah, they put out like, you know, four to eight albums in a year, and they can just, you can choose from this huge spectrum of genres, and it doesn't matter if, like, you might not like every single one of them, you can find something that you will like. And I really, <laughs> I think that drives a lot of people to, like, be really enthusiastic about how they talk about King Gizzard, specifically as a band, separate from any other music they might really love. They made this album already, they're on to another thing. If you if you don't like it, cool, but if you like that other album, you can always listen to it again. I always say there's a King Gizzard album for everybody. If you don't like King Gizzard, there's an album for you. You're gonna find something that you vibe with. It's like, yes, it feels a little thrash metal-y, but it's still King Gizzard. Yes, it feels a little like poppy or punky or whatever, but it still feels like King Gizzard. Exactly. And I love that about them. Well, I've seen them a few times and it's always a completely different atmosphere, a uh, different crowd, different venue. It's always a different experience and I think that is really exciting. And the, just the not knowing is like one of the most exciting things to me. You saw King Gizzard today at the Roseland Theater in Portland and it's going to feel like you're seeing them there. Uh, from them like printing out a poster, making the set list incredibly different. You can feel the love that they have for each other, the way that you just look at them, eye each other. Then the cue, go to the next crazy part of the song. You have to have a major connection to just pull that song out of your ass and then just be ready, all of you on one wavelength, to go down. Yeah, that's what the thing is about Giz fans, and it's about Gizzard too. It's like Gizzard's putting out this stuff that like we're on this wavelength and everybody else is like, riding that wavelength as well. You know, it's like this wild, like, communal thing, you know? It's like a great, it's like today's Grateful Dead in a way. It's like a certain kind of fire that's been lit by this torch that's been passed. Maybe the torch looks different, but the fire is the same, you know? It's I mean, amazing. you know, it's like, I mean, how big were the dead, you know, 10 years into their stuff yeah. in 1975? Pretty, pretty big. Yeah. They were selling out everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, give it, give it a couple decades. I mean, you then then get then go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't know. It speaks to this like thing inside of you, this sort of yearning for a little bit more, like kind of questioning or whatever. But it's a little bit off the wall, but it also doesn't give a fuck. You know, there's like there's this not like I don't give a fuck kind of thing about it. It's sort of punk, but then it's also like super lighthearted. You know, come on, man. It's a little bit of like the whole weirdo swarm aspect. Embrace that inner child silliness inside of you. Also embrace the rage that's inside of you. There's a lot of like philosophical shit about it, um, but then it's also very playful. So it's like hitting on all of those things that are just, that just encompass the human experience in a multitude of ways, you know? It hits that broad spectrum of things, and I think people just grab onto that, you know? I feel like King Gizzard just pretty much stands for everything I stand for. The climate crisis, to like women's rights, to like human rights, indigenous rights, everything they write about, their music, their whole essence is about making this world a better place, but also just being badasses and saying fuck the system and fuck the world and everything that's happening because this world is bullshit. We all became fans and Mike had a birthday coming up. Well, let's make a jacket for Mike and it's the one he's wearing right here. Oh hand stenciled this, painted this, and then Mike's girlfriend, Laura, she wrote the lyrics to Head on Pill on the inside of it. And we gave this to him for his birthday, and to see his reaction, it was so emotional, so special, that that's honestly what kicked off 
this kind of Saigon thing. thing. It sparked the whole thing from the beginning. All, all four of us just met them. Yeah. And it's like proof more than anything, you know, you kind of get the feeling before you meet them that they're really, they're actual class act guys. They're real stand up people trying to move through the world the best, least harmful way they can. For me, I feel like King is to me. It, it uh, like they, they actually unlocked um, a lot of creativity musically that I that I have had inside me. The stuff they're playing, like it just it it just clicked with me so, to such a degree that I started writing my own stuff and like people are liking it, so it's it's cool. I got to hang out with Cookie um, for like 15 minutes in Vegas and told him about that, and he was kind of wowed, you know, blown away. It was like that he was able to have that impact. We started a band not just because of King Gizzard. But King Gizzard inspired us with their motifs and their melodies to just be free with creating, you know, and always like just don't care what people say, you know, like just try your best and always be improving, you know. We went to get breakfast and Stu, Ambrose and Lucas walk in to have, have breakfast. All of a sudden it's like, well, you know, how could I not say anything to them, right? And we all we all got to talk to them and had our had our really cool moments and I told them, I was like, hey, can I just tell you guys that I hiked 1,500 miles to get here, you know? And watching them, watching them like raise their eyebrows, like, wait, did you say that right? It was, <laughs> it was so cool having <laughs> Stu like, like phrase you and ask you personal questions too, just like watching that go down. Yeah. Where it's just yeah. like genuine, like, yo, that's really cool and sick and have them just like be so down to earth that they're not like, blah, 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 whatever. They're like genuinely interested in how, yeah. how you got here. And yeah. that was really cool. Perfect confirmation, like I was saying earlier about them being class act guys. I learned, yeah, I've learned this lesson before and it's something I think most people have to learn many times over their lives, but I learned that I am not special. There's a special something to everybody. Yeah. And that's what makes everyone so not special is because if everyone was incredibly special and always highlighted, then we would never have the ability to be like, wow, that's something special. Yeah. So it's like the fact that everyone has their own specialty in their own little way does make everyone in some way special, but it makes everyone not special as a whole. We're all just dudes and dudettes living our life, trying to get through. Yeah. And the only thing that we have in common is that we're all people. And the only thing that makes us different is our own perspectives. Absolutely. So it's just like, mm -hmm. as long as you know that you have good intentions and that you treat people how you'd like to be treated and you just put out love, you'll get nothing but love back. It's just inspiring, you know, they'll like keep finding different avenues to grow. And I figured like, why can't we do that? Like, they're just dudes chilling in Australia. We're dudes chilling in Texas. Like, let's do it. Let's get to this fucking house, live in it, jam, and make some tunes. Thank you so, 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 so much.